It's because I actually hope to leave Japan in the near future. But there is also a risk of the eruption of Mount Fuji. Then is Japan an unsuitable country for anyone to live in? Of course not. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. I often receive comments and DMs saying that my dream is to live in Japan. As a Japanese living in Japan, on one hand, I'm very happy and honored about it. But on the other hand, I have mixed feelings too. It's because I actually hope to leave Japan in the near future. But how did a Japanese man like me end up thinking this way? So today, I will talk about the three main reasons why I personally cannot recommend you to live in Japan. The three reasons will get more and more important towards the end, so I hope you can stay with me until the end. Lastly, I will also like to list the kind of people who are suited to live in Japan. Before I move on, I need to make it very clear to you that the purpose of this video is not to lessen the number of people living in Japan. My life's goal is to try to make as many people happy as possible, so I wish that the information I share will be useful for anyone trying to plan their future. After watching this video, if there's anything else you'd like to learn more about living in Japan, please let me know in the comments. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So let's go! One, many natural disasters. I'm going to introduce this first because there's nothing we can do about it. As I've explained many times before, Japan is one of the countries in the world with the most amount of natural disasters. Despite the fact that Japan occupies only 0.28% of Earth's land area, we have 7% of all active volcanoes, 10% of all earthquakes, 20% of all earthquakes stronger than magnitude 6.0 average of 26 typhoons passing near or over every year, average of 2,000 landslides disasters every year. As a result, about 18.3% of the worldwide cost of disaster damage is spent in Japan. But if you've been watching my videos, I'm pretty sure this is nothing new to you. So let's talk about some specific natural disasters that can actually happen in the near future. One, Nankai Megathrust Earthquake. Two, Capital Inland Earthquake. Three, Mount Fuji Volcanic Eruption. The Nankai Trough is a plate boundary located south of the Shikoku region of Japan. And earthquakes that occur there are called Nankai Trough Earthquakes. Such earthquakes repeatedly occur at intervals of 100 to 150 years and are very large in the magnitude of 8 to 9 class. More than 70 years have passed since the last one occurred in 1946, so the danger of the next Nankai Trough earthquake is increasing. It has been noted that there is an extremely high 80% chance that it will happen within 30 years. And even if it doesn't, it will certainly happen someday. In the worst case scenario, it is estimated that the next Nankai Megathrust earthquake will be magnitude 9.1, which is about 1.5 times stronger than the Great East Japan earthquake in 2011. Thus, the total damage is expected to be around 220 trillion yen, 10 times the amount of the Great East Japan earthquake. And that is not it. There is also the threat of the Capital Inland Earthquake that could strike the Tokyo area in the next 30 years at a 70% chance. It is estimated to kill more than 100,000 people, and the total damage will exceed 100 trillion yen. Earthquakes alone are frightening enough, but there is also a risk of the eruption of Mount Fuji. Fuji is an iconic Japanese mountain, but it is also an active volcano. Terrifyingly, it has not erupted in over 300 years, and the risk of eruption in conjunction with these earthquakes is very high. It is estimated that the cinders, pyroclastic flows, and lava flows will force over 800,000 people to evacuate. But imagine this happening after an earthquake that is big as magnitude 7 or stronger. The damage that could be caused is immeasurable. There is no way to escape these natural disasters if you choose to live in Japan. 
two, elders always have priority. Although this is gradually changing, Japan is still a society where hierarchical relationships are very strong. Many of you must know about the relationship between seniors and juniors in Japan from watching anime and movies. And if you have studied Japanese, you'd also know about the difficulty of Kegel. The positional relationship is severely divided after only one year of age or experience, or possibly even just a few days. And lower people are taught to be silent and obey those who are above them, basically believing that they do not have the authority to express their opinion to those who are higher than them. Even a saying expresses this. If a superior says crows are white, they are white. There are many cases where you know that something is clearly better from a rational standpoint, but you cannot do it unless someone higher up gives permission. Although in Japan, we often discuss eliminating fax machines, paper business cards, seals, and other outdated systems and rules in companies, this is the reason why they are still unresolved. If you repeatedly leave the workplace before your boss, express your own opinions clearly, etc., you will often be labeled as uncooperative in Japan and treated as a disturbance in the organization. For me, who likes to do things rationally and efficiently, this is really a painful culture. And unfortunately, young people raised in such a culture often stop thinking and give up, assuming that their opinions will not be heard anyway. This can be confirmed by the data showing the lowest voting rate among all generations are among those in their teens and 20s. I am 28 years old, but I have hardly met anyone in my same generation who have high aspirations to change Japan. What is even worse for Japan today is that it has the worst case in the world of a declining birth rate and aging population. The average age of Japanese people is 48.4 years old, and more than 29.8% of the population is older than 65 years old. So there is a big number of elders who believe they have absolute control over the people lower than them, and the few amount of young people suffer because of it. Politicians also want the votes from the many elderly people, so they're promoting policies that favor the elderly more and more, which in turn reduces the amount of money available for childcare and education. It is said that one in seven Japanese children lives in relative poverty, on average living on less than 140,000 yen per month if they live alone with a single parent. A 2018 survey also found out that Japan ranks last among the 34 OECD countries in terms of the percentage of money the country spends on education. Even today, they are still full of young people who are struggling to repay millions of yen in tuition loans from the time they enter the workplace. When I talk about these things, I'm often asked the question, why do the elderly in Japan abandon the young? I think that it is undeniable that in any country, if the birth rate declines and the population starts to age, priority will be given to the elderly to some extent. But even so, the situation in Japan is terrible. I suspect that this may also be influenced by the hierarchical relationship we've been discussing. They believe that since they followed their superiors silently when they were in a lower position, that now they are in a higher position, they should be treated like kings and queens. Many superiors think that the people lower than them should have a hard time, just like they did. I know that there are many proposals to make Japan a better place. However, the current democratic system requires that the elderly be convinced of these proposals, so they are not easily implemented. 3. The national power is determined to weaken. Japan has the most rapidly declining population in the world, and the government is hardly doing anything to try to solve it. Japan's population as of October 1st, 2021 was 125.5 million, down by 640,000 from the previous year. It is expected to reach 106.42 million by 2045, 88.08 million by 2065, and 60 million by around 2100. 
100. The decline in population means the decline in economy because it will result in smaller markets, lower GDP, and lower tax revenues. So Japan is a country whose natural strength is certain to weaken in the near future. Due to the aging of the population, about 30 years from now, the working age population is expected to be about 50%, with only one out of every two people able to work. Solutions such as accepting more immigrants, approving dual citizenship, and providing financial assistance to the child-raising generation remain unadopted. And the elderly are still only concerned with getting away with their lives happily and keeping things the way they were. Wages will continue to fall and taxes will continue to rise, as it has for the past 20 to 30 years. And there are concerns that crime rates will also rise as people's quality of life declines. I explained this in detail in a different video, so if you're interested, I hope you can check it out there. Then is Japan an unsuitable country for anyone to live in? Of course not. I'm sure that my exclamation so far may have given you the impression that Japan is the worst country in the world. However, every country has its problems, and of course, Japan has its good points too. It is wonderful to live surrounded by unique history and culture, delicious food, beautiful cityscapes, and nature. So the people I think that are suitable to live in Japan are as follows. 1. People who can earn foreign currency. People who are wealthy enough to live regardless of their government's intentions in declining wages, and people who would rather benefit if the yen continues to weaken. 2. People who are well prepared for natural disasters. In the worst case scenario, people who can temporarily flee abroad. 3. People who can work freely without belonging to an organization. If you can live your life only involved with people you choose, you can ignore Japan's annoying rules. In other words, I think that foreign YouTubers living in Japan can live in very good conditions. So PewDiePie, great choice. But Shogo, don't you fit these conditions too? It may seem that way, just looking at the conditions. However, the biggest problem for me is that continuing to live in Japan will interfere with my dream. And my dream is to pass on Japanese traditional cultures to future generations around the world. However, in Japan, the risk of natural disasters can force my activities to be suspended. There are many people who do not feel comfortable with my work, like this YouTube channel, due to the hierarchical culture. And there are very few young people who are willing to carry on the traditional culture. I would like to move abroad so that I can spread my culture a little more freely and teach the young people there. So please do not misunderstand me. I am not leaving because I hate Japan. I intend to return to Japan frequently for my training even after moving abroad. And I plan to continue some kind of business in Japan too, to help the younger generations of Japan. And lastly, please let me know your recommendations of places or countries I should go to to make my dreams come true. Then lastly, today's conclusion. I explained the three main reasons why I want to leave Japan in the near future. 1. Many natural disasters. Despite the fact that Japan occupies only 0.28% of the world's land area, about 18.3% of the worldwide cost of disaster damage is spent in Japan. There is also a very high chance of two huge earthquakes happening within the next 30 years and Mount Fuji may even erupt in conjunction with these earthquakes. 2. Elders always have priority. Japan is still a society where hierarchical relationships are very strict. So even when you know that something is clearly better from a rational standpoint, you cannot do it unless someone higher up gives permission. Young people raised in such a culture often stop thinking and give up assuming that their opinions will not be heard anyway. The declining birth rate in your aging population is making the situation worse because politicians are promoting policies that favor the elderly more and more. 3. The national power is determined to weaken. Japan has the most rapid declining population in the world, and the government is hardly doing anything to try to solve it. Wages will continue to fall. Taxes will continue to rise, as it has for the past 20 to 30 years. And there are concerns that crime rates will rise as people's quality of life declines. The people I think are suitable to live in Japan are as follows. 1. People who can earn foreign currency. 2. People who are well prepared for natural disasters. 3. People who can work freely without belonging to an organization. 
That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you thought this video was useful for you to plan your future of maybe moving to Japan, please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And please check out our sub channel and membership and also our Kofi and Suzuki page from the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. So I'm thinking of maybe moving out of Japan in, within the next 10 years. It'd be great if I could move out of Japan somewhere in between 35 to 40. Yeah, it'd be great. I'm 28 years old right now, so maybe in the next seven years. And the countries I will be able to go to, the conditions on, it would be better if the time difference is not so uh, big compared to Japan. Like if it's like tw 12 hours or 13 hour difference. For example, there are some on uh, training that can still take on over on the internet, you know, over do Zoom or some Doom, <laughs> over Zoom and such. So uh, it would be great if the time difference is not so big. It will also be very important that it's very warm. Um, considering my uh, sickness with my Reno sickness and my fingers, it does need to be very warm too. And I guess, I guess those two are the most important conditions for us right now. Um, very small time difference and it needs to be warm. So if you can give me any ideas, it'd be great. Thank you so much for your time, guys.